Tally, you know, both Lori and I talk about talk about this from a high level perspective, but you have been the person uh, who was tasked with actually implementing this and putting it in place. So maybe you could get into some of the, the details now that we understand what drove Teva to take a different approach, maybe thinking about what are some of the process steps or, or how you actually are looking at your approach to third party due diligence. Yes, thank you, Chris, and thank you, Laurie. Um, yes, indeed, it, it is and still a, was and still a journey. Uh, and I think, you know, if, if I want to look at the key factors that help us to get to where we are, which is really having a uh, state of the heart, a, a third party due diligence program, I will kind of uh, um, divide it into kind of behind the scene uh, key factors and some of the more like external facing uh, key factors, which I think, Laurie, touched upon, you know, the governance and the turn of the top and the change management and really the having measurable results when the business can see the benefit, the advantages, and then, you know, we, we get the trust both on, on us as a, as a business partner and, and also in terms of the program. But moving more into the behind the scene, you know, where, as Laurie likes to say, sausage are being uh, made, uh, how we actually did that. Uh, I think, you know, there are three components uh, to that. And one will be uh, having the right data in place. The second one will be having the right business rules, which are risk-based business rules. And the third one will be having innovative workflow and, and customized approach. If we move to the next slide, I think it will be easy or easier for our audience to, to see the visuals as I take you through it. Um, so as, as Lori mentioned, you know, and, and many of us, you know, are using and we at Teva used to use the traditional approach where we have this huge amount of third parties, you know, on, on the left and we need to put them through the process and send the questionnaire and wait for the results. And then, you know, after waiting more for the results to conduct the due diligence. And at the end, this is where we kind of start seeing who are the, the green ones and the red ones and the yellow ones. And, you know, in the middle, there's like this black hole that you don't know what's going on until you get to the end result. And what we are doing with this new approach is actually, you know, we, we start with the data and in a moment I'll talk about why I think the data we start with is, is smart data and better than the data that we used to have. And then when we apply the business rules, then we get the upfront risk determination of, you know, the greens and the yellow and the reds then we can, as Laurie mentioned, you know, the business is encouraged to go and pick from the, from the red, from, sorry, from the green ones who gives them the fast track uh, to move ahead. But even looking at the left side on the data, I like to refer it as smart data, is which data we have today in our system. And, and we have today in the system that, that EY developed for us more than 20 million records. That's a huge number of records. Uh, all of these 20 million records are potential third, third parties that Teva can choose to engage with, but they are not just random third parties. These are third parties which we selected to be included in these 20 million records, spread it out in 60 something uh, geographical uh, countries where we operate. And the way we did it is really leveraging our knowledge of which type of third parties we are using. But then with the help of EY, translating it into NACE codes. And NACE codes, these are these uh, international self-defined uh, by companies, their own activities. Um, and therefore there are many NACE codes and together with EY, we kind of collected all of them and put them into our basket. And, you know, when we had to test it and at the beginning we had approximately 20 NACE codes that we thought that capturing all our third parties and eventually we ended up in, with almost 50. Uh, so now we do feel that we have the right scope of, uh, of data, but that's only the, the which data we want to put inside. Yes, so we found the 50 NACE codes, but now the second question was the what. What do we want to know about those third parties? And, and how far do we want to go back and, and look uh, about the red flags that are connected to these third parties? So again, as part of the journey and the testing that we did, we came up with the decision that we really want to focus on three areas of uh, information, which will be both on the company 
and the executives, and that will refer to sanctions, enforcement, and social media. And in a moment, I'll talk about the business rules and how we you know, calculated all this information. But first, we came across to the understanding that we have the right data, the smart data, and this is always the, the, the key for success, having the right data. Um, if we move to the next slide, then we can talk about the business rules. Okay, so we have all this data and, you know, sometimes too much data, it's, it's too much. How, how do you do, you know, how you digest all this data? What do you do with it? So again, together with EY, we work together to define what are the business rules that are applicable for Teva. So they may not be applicable for other industries, they may not be applicable for other companies, but for us, understanding our risk tolerance and our risk appetite, these were the right business rules. And in order to develop those, we used three uh, components. The first component was the external risk. And this is what I mentioned, the sanctions, the enforcement, the social media, all the red flags that the EY were able to pull for us from external resources. On top of that, we took the second component, which was the service type. As I described, we have almost 50 NACE codes. And we realized, again, based on our knowledge and, and the advice we received, that different types of services came, come with different types of risks. So I think everyone will agree that a law firm is not as risky or has different risk as a distributor, than a custom agent, than a travel agency. So each of the type of the services had different scoring that we, we assigned. And last, we took the geography, so similar to the CPI index of corruption, we assigned different scoring to different geographies and different countries, understanding that you know, in the, the world we live, there are red countries and there are yellow countries. So we, we cannot look at, uh, uh, ignore that and we need to put it together. And then EY took everything and came up with this formula that kind of brings all this information. And once we apply this algorithm on the 20 plus million records, if we move to the next slide, we'll see that this is when we come with the end result. And this is where we break out these 20 plus million of records into the basket of the low risk, the medium and the high. Um, so that's kind of uh, uh, in a nutshell, uh, summarizing months of uh, work and uh, sleepless <laughs> nights uh, into something which looked very simple and easy, but it was really a true partnership uh, within different stakeholders at Teva and, of course, with, with EY.